and I will continue with the lecture series on the theory of the noble. So we had discussed the inguinal in canal and so, so normally um, how do you define a hernia? So a hernia is abnormal protractor beyond its normal size. Yeah, so abnormal protrusion of any beyond its normal site. So when something is supposed to be located in the abdomen and it protrudes elsewhere, like in the pelvis, we say there is herniation. So, or in the abdomen and it protrudes through the diaphragm to the thorax, we say this herniation. So the hernia commonly occur in the inguinal region, oral region, and the glycol region. So um, we have two types of inguinal hernia. So you can have protrusion of viscera from the abdominal wall through the inguinal canal. So we have two types of inguinal hernia. We have the direct and indirect hernias. Remember, which is the Hasselbach triangle. Direct inguinal hernia, you have viscera passing through the Hasselbach triangle. So it is a hernia that occurs medial to the inferior epigastric artery. Remember, the inferior epigastric arteries form lateral boundary of the Hasselbach triangle. So if viscera from the abdomen hit medial inferior epigastric artery through the Hasselbach triangle, we say that's a direct inguinal hernia. But if viscera pass through the deep inguinal ring lateral to the inferior epigastric artery, we say that's an indirect hernia. Remember, the inguinal ring is located lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels. So if herniation occurs through the deep inguinal ring, we call that indirect hernia. Then we have femoral hernias that usually occur through the femoral ring. So what are the differences in all these hernias? Indirect hernia, the indirect hernia that passes through the deep ring, uh, it can extend into the scrotum. The direct hernia don't extend into the scrotum due to the presence of the um, conjoined tendon over it. So this conjoined tendon over it, the direct hernia may not um, extend into the scrotum because of the conjoined tendon. Then we have femoral hernia. Femoral hernia are different from inguinal hernia. What's the difference? So femoral hernias occur below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. They occur below and lateral to the pubic tubercle because that's really the location of the femoral ring. Well, inguinal hernias usually emerge above and medial to the pubic tubercle. So inguinal hernias emerge above. Remember, the superficial ring is above the pubic tubercle. So inguinal hernias will emerge above the pubic tubercle, while femoral hernias emerge below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. So this is what we are discussing. This is the inguinal canal. You can see external oblique abdominis, internal oblique transverse abdominis. So the two transverse abdominis, internal oblique, form a conjoint tendon. This is your inguinal moment, which is the inferior enrolled mud. This is your inguinal canal. So this is the superficial ring. As you can see here, herniation medial to the inferior gastric vessels through the Hasselbach triangle. You can see the bowel are herniating through the posterior wall of the inguinal canal, passing through the uh, medial portion of the inguinal canal through the superficial ring. So this is direct inguinal hernia. Herniation of viscera uh, medial to inferior epigastric vessel through Hasselbach's triangle passing through posterior wall of the um, inguinal canal and the viscera will pass through the superficial inguinal ring which gives you a direct inguinal hernia. While indirect inguinal hernia, this is indirect inguinal hernia. So what happens, it, it is herniation that occurs through the deep um, ring, deep ring of the inguinal canal, okay? Through the deep ring of the inguinal canal, passing through the whole way of the inguinal canal through the superficial ring outwards. So this indirect occurs lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels. So it doesn't occur through the Hasselbach's triangle. So you can see femoral hernia occurs below the pubic tubercle, while inguinal hernia occur above the pubic um, tubercle. And you can see the herniated viscera has gone into the scrotum. We have other hernias of the anterior abdominal wall. You have epigastric hernia occurring uh, through the linear alba at the epigastric area. Decisional hernia after surgical incisions. Umbilical hernia where you have protrusion of viscera through the umbilicus. Then indirect inguinal hernia. You can see passing through the deep ring inguinal canal and into the superficial ring while direct will pass from the posterior wall of the inguinal canal through the superficial ring. Then see the femoral hernia is below and lateral to the pubic tubercle, while the inguinal hernias are above the pubic tubercle. 
So we discussed the Hasselbach triangle. We said it has three boundaries. Inferiorly, you have the inguinal element. Then um, medially, you have the lateral border of the erector subdomain. And laterally, the Hasselbach triangle is formed by the inferior epigastric artery. And the triangle is important clinically because you're able to tell the difference whether you're having a direct or indirect inguinal hernia. So this is your Hasselbach's triangle. Medially, the lateral border of rectus subdomain is laterally inferior epigastric uh, vessels, and inferiorly you have your inguinal ligament. Look at the position of the lacunar ligament. We said it's an extension of the inguinal ligament at the pubic tubercle to the pectoral pubis. So this is your lacunar ligament, and usually it forms part of the margin of the femoral ring. So you can see external iliac vessels here giving you inferior gastric vessels. This is your inguinal ligament coming from anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. And then you appreciate your ductus deferens, which is coming from uh, ductus deferens. It's coming from the testis. So it's carrying sperm from the testis through the, uh, it's in the scrotum through superficial inguinal ring to the inguinal canal through the deep ring to go and empty into the um, prostatic urethra. So these are types of incisions that are done on the abdomen. So you can do an incision below costal margin, outline incision through linear upper, paramedian incision parallel to the rectus abdominis mass. You can do a subcubic incision. So these are the different circle incisions that are done. So that's your median or midline incision, left paramedian incision, you have a subcostal incision, you have a muscle splitting incision there, transverse incision, and suprapubic incision. Okay? So you must identify the, all these structures in the abdomen during your dissection, all the ligaments, the muscles, the neurovascular structures. Thank you.